Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, Corruption of the U.S. Temperature Record. U.S. temperatures are extremely important because the vast majority of high-quality long-term data is from the United States. This map shows the location of stations in NOAA's Global Historical Climatology Network, which had daily temperature data from 1891 to 1920. You can see that there's a lot of data from the United States, almost none from South America, a little bit from Europe, pretty much none from Africa, very little from Russia and Asia, and a little bit from some parts of Australia. So of course the United States temperature data becomes extremely important because it's the only large area in the world which has really good long-term daily temperature data. Now let's look at the NOAA U.S. temperature graph. NOAA shows U.S. temperatures increasing fairly steadily since the late 19th century. According to them, temperatures in the United States have risen nearly 3 degrees since 1895. This is in direct contradiction to what they said 30 years ago. New York Times, January 26, 1989. U.S. data since 1895 failed to show warming trend. After examining climate data extending back 100 years, a team of government scientists has concluded there's been no significant change in average temperatures or rainfall in the United States over that entire period. In other words, the United States climate was not changing. This study was made by scientists for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So let's look at the NOAA graph now for that same time period from 1895 to 1988. Well, NOAA now shows a lot of warming during that period. So it's pretty clear that the data has been altered by NOAA. This is not conspiracy theory. It's right from the NOAA website. Now we're going to look at the history of how and why the data has been altered over the last 30 years. 20 years ago, the world's leading climate alarmist, NASA's James Hansen, wrote this paper. In this paper, he lamented the fact that United States temperatures were cooling. Empirical evidence does not lend much support to the notion that climate is headed precipitately toward more extreme heat and drought. The drought of 1999 covered a smaller area than the 1988 drought when the Mississippi River almost dried up. And 1988 was a temporary inconvenience as compared with repeated droughts during the 1930s Dust Bowl that caused an exodus from the prairies as chronicled in Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath. How can the absence of clear climate change in the United States be reconciled with continued reports of record global temperature? Part of the answer is that U.S. climate has been following a different course than global climate. In the U.S., there has been little temperature change in the last 50 years, the time of rapidly increasing greenhouse gases. In fact, there was a slight cooling throughout much of the country. So here was Hansen's two graphs. On the left was the United States temperatures, and on the right was his global temperature graph. You can see that the United States had been cooling since the 1930s, whereas he showed the world warming. So now let's go back and look at the NOAA map. The United States has very good, high-quality, long-term temperature data, whereas the rest of the world tends to have very little. So which graph is more likely to be correct? The United States graph, which showed cooling, or the world graph which showed warming. This is where the good data is located. So the obvious thing to do would be to correct the global temperature graph because they don't have very good data and try to make it look more like the US temperature graph. But James Hansen had an agenda to prove that carbon dioxide was warming the earth so he did the exact opposite. He altered the high quality US temperature data to make it look more like the low quality global temperatures. This animation flashes back and forth between NASA's 1999 graph and their 2016 version of the graph. And you see what they did. They turned this cooling trend from the 1930s into a warming trend. So let's look at this a few times. 1999 cooling, 2016 warming. 1999 cooling, 2016 warming. Once again, this is not conspiracy theory. Both of these graphs were taken right off the NASA website. NASA and NOAA have turned cooling over the past 80 years into warming by altering the data. Now we're going to look at exactly what they did. Once again, this is the current NOAA U.S. temperature graph. NOAA publishes several U.S. temperature data sets. The red line here is their final data set, 
And their blue line here is their actual measured data, which they call the raw data set. The final data set in red is what they released to the public in their graphs, and you can see that it shows fairly steady warming. But the blue data set is the actual thermometer data, which shows cooling since the 1930s. All that I did to generate these graphs was average out all the temperatures in both data sets per year. I've released the open source software I used to generate these plots. It's been out there for years and no one's ever found anything wrong with it. It's very simple math. I'm just taking a numerical average of the temperatures from the 1,218 NOAA United States Historical Climatology Network stations. This next graph shows the adjustments being made. It's just the difference between their final temperature and their raw temperature for each year. Temperatures prior to the year 2010 are cooled and temperatures after 2010 are warmed. If we go back to the very hot 1930s, which James Hansen described in his paper, we can see that they cool temperatures then by about one degree. And now they're warming temperatures by about one degree. This creates a huge hockey stick of data tampering. Thermometers don't show warming in the United States over the past 80 years. The warming is created by altering the data, as you can see in this graph. This graph has the year across the x-axis and the temperature adjustment up the y-axis. Now let's look at a slightly different version of the same graph. Now instead of plotting year across the x-axis, I'm plotting atmospheric carbon dioxide. And something amazing pops up. The temperature adjustment being made correlates almost perfectly with atmospheric carbon dioxide. The graph forms a straight line with an r squared of 0.977. This shows us with very high confidence that the data is being altered to match their carbon dioxide warming theory. This is the ultimate in confirmation bias junk science. They're changing their data to match the theory, doing the exact opposite of what scientists should do. Scientists should adjust their theory to match the data. A big part of this data tampering is accomplished by simply making up data. According to NOAA, a certain percentage of stations don't report every month. And for some reason, that number of stations has been increasing very rapidly over the last 20 years. It used to be about 10% of stations didn't report, and now they have about 50% of stations not reporting. And when a station doesn't report, they generate the temperatures via a computer model rather than a thermometer. When you're fabricating half of the data, you can pretty much generate any shape plot you want. And that's exactly what they do. They take the raw temperature data, which shows cooling, and turn it into warming by altering the data. So now let's take a closer look at the adjustments. There's no such thing as an average temperature thermometer. Temperatures are normally recorded as a minimum and a maximum for the day. In this analysis, we're going to look at maximum daily temperatures, which normally occur during the afternoon. NOAA shows that afternoon temperatures are increasing rapidly in the United States since the 19th century. This map shows the 1,218 stations being used. As you can see, they're fairly evenly distributed around the United States. It's a lot of stations. They're somewhat more concentrated in the eastern part of the United States, which tends to weight eastern temperatures a little more heavily than western temperatures. If we look at the average maximum daily temperature at all United States Historical Climatology Network stations, we see a cooling trend since the 1930s. This graph shows the percent of days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, or 32 degrees centigrade, at all of these 1,218 stations. Once again, we see a strong cooling trend. The 1930s were very hot, as Dr. Hansen mentioned in his 1999 paper. Millions of people fled the heat and drought of the 1930s in the Great Plains and moved to California, as John Steinbeck chronicled in his novel The Grapes of Wrath. There was also a big spike of heat in the 1950s, but as you can see, since about 1960, there hasn't been a tremendous amount of hot days in the United States. So as carbon dioxide has increased over time, the frequency of hot days has declined in the United States. This is, of course, the exact opposite of what experts want you to believe. So now let's look at their justifications for tampering with the data. This graph shows the average latitude of all of the United States Historical Climatology Network stations. What you can see is that the average latitude over the last 20 years has moved somewhat north. This tends to produce cooler temperatures. 
Another justification is called the time of observation bias. This is a min-max thermometer, which is how temperatures have traditionally been recorded. The thermometer is a U-shape and has little magnetic sliders inside the tube, which record the minimum and maximum temperature since the last time the thermometer was reset. You can get different temperature readings depending on what time you reset the magnetic sliders. For example, suppose that you reset the sliders just once a day in the afternoon near the maximum temperature for the day. Let's say that on day one it was 90 degrees and on day two it was 30 degrees, but you reset the thermometer when it was 90 degrees. So what you'll get is a 90 degree reading on day one and day two, which will tend to make your temperatures too high. And conversely, if you reset the sliders too close to the daily minimum, you'll tend to double count cold days and make your temperatures too cold. I had a min-max thermometer when I was about seven years old, and it took me about one day to realize that you had to reset the thermometers twice per day. You had to reset the maximum in the morning and the minimum in the afternoon. Noah believes that in the 1930s, most people reset their thermometers in the afternoon, which would tend to make 1930s temperatures too high, so they adjust them downwards to compensate. And that's a major part of why they're cooling the 1930s, turning this cooling trend into a warming trend. So now I'm going to do a very simple experiment to find out if their adjustments for time of observation bias and changing station latitude are legitimate. Rather than trying to make adjustments, I'm simply going to eliminate the stations which had questionable data. This map shows all of the stations which did not reset their thermometers in the afternoon in the 1930s and have been continuously active ever since then. This should eliminate the need for any adjustments. This set of stations would not suffer from afternoon time of observation bias and their latitude didn't change much either. Now let's look at the data from that set of stations. Once again, we see a cooling trend since the 1930s not the fake warming trend which NOAA is creating by altering the data. This tells me that the adjustments being made by NOAA are bogus. This graph shows the percent of days above 90 degrees at that same set of stations. They can't make the claim that this set of stations suffers from time of observation bias, yet the 1930s and 1950s were much hotter. The reality is that the 1930s and 1950s were very hot and all the adjustments in the world can't make history disappear. And this graph shows the average latitude at that set of stations. Once again, you can see that it's hardly changed at all, so there's no excuse for data tampering based on latitude either. So we just looked at the stations which reset their thermometers in the morning during the 1930s. Now let's look at the set of stations which reset their thermometers in the afternoon. Once again, we see the same pattern of declining temperature since the 1930s and the frequency of hot days has also declined, just like they did with the morning stations. And the average latitude of the afternoon stations has also remained very consistent, so there's no excuse for data tampering there either. So it doesn't make any difference which set of stations we use. We can use morning stations, we can use afternoon stations, they all show the United States cooling. The no adjustments which create warming are bogus. And what's even more disturbing is they simply alter the data in place rather than just putting the error bars on it, which would be the correct scientific way to do it if they have a theory that there's a problem with the data. Scientists and members of the public see these sort of graphs and they think that the data represents the actual thermometer data. But as I've just shown you, it doesn't. And then thousands of other scientists generate studies based on the assumption that these graphs are accurate when they're not. The entire field of climate science depends on the accuracy of these graphs. And policy makers do too. We have all these hysterical Democrats who think the world's going to end in 12 years based on bogus temperature graphs from NOAA. Here's the Democrats' leading climate expert weighing in on policy. This is Democratic Congressional Representative Alexandria Cortez who authored the Green New Deal. How many years until the world ends again? We have 12 years left to cut emissions by at least 50%, if not more. This is going back to the data tampering again. This is the EPA graph of the area of the United States with unusually hot summer temperatures. What we can see is that as a result of the data tampering, they're showing summers hotter now than they were during the 1930s. This is complete nonsense and has nothing to do with reality. 
The actual data shows that the frequency of hot days has plummeted in the United States since the 1930s and has been near record lows in recent years. An entire field of science is based around temperature data which has been altered using bogus adjustments. And even worse is that the high quality U.S. temperature data has been altered to match the low quality global temperatures. The whole thing's a farce. Climate alarmists claim that what they're doing is based on basic physics, but when actual physicists like Dr. Will Happer or Freeman Dyson weigh in, they don't want to listen. Democrats in Congress instead want to listen to children who've been fed nothing but climate propaganda since they were in preschool. Watching this global warming scam is reminiscent of a Monty Python skit. The whole thing is a giant parody of reality. Unfortunately, it's serious business, though, because people in Congress want to base important policy decisions around it. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.